Case Fakiri was 14 years old when the Taliban captured the Afghan capital of Kabul. He fled with his family to Pakistan and stayed there for six years. There was fighting, there was wars, there was lies coming to the media. Then I was interested to know myself the reality, what's the reality behind the scene. Shortly after the Taliban were overthrown three years ago, Case returned to his home city of Mazar-e-Sharif. Democracy was beginning to take root, yet Case, like many Afghanis, still felt he was in the dark about his country's progress. The local media has a very huge problem in Afghanistan. For example, we still don't have a national daily newspaper in the whole country. Off a dusty side street in central Mazar, Case discovered the local offices of a group called the Institute for War and Peace Reporting. <laughs> the London-based organization trains local journalists in more than a dozen countries where the press has traditionally been the mouthpiece of the government. I have a couple of questions on your uh, story that you guys just handed in. Mm -hmm. Editors from established media organizations staff the field offices to bring in recruits and to give them a crash course in reporting. Okay, local only stories. We talked about this also last week, doing more of them, and we are doing more of them. I think we had four this week, so that was fantastic. If you, if you finish a story in this period, hand it in and start thinking about your next one. You got okay. a, a basic uh, journalist, journalism skills training, like, uh, for example, what's accuracy in a, in a report, or for example, what's uh, balance in a report. How to, how to get, get uh, quotes from people, how to interview people. Thing. The whole thing is kind of one sentence that says, this is what the story is about, and this is why you should be reading it. In a country that the Taliban made notorious for its tight control and abuse of information, these fledgling journalists hope to at last bring an independent voice to Afghanistan. It's still, it's child in Afghanistan, a free press is child in Afghanistan. A free press uh, faces lots of obstacles in the in our society, since both the government and the people are not used to it. Case is the sole source of income for his mother and seven siblings, including his 15-year-old brother, who lost his leg a decade ago to a rocket attack. Case earns 20 to $30 for each story he files. Uh, I have a story on, the, on traffic problems in the city. We have lots of accidents and uh, lots of uh, crowd in the streets and uh, it's difficult to get somewhere. I was thinking to have a story on that and to, to know and uh, to tell to the people what's going on and why these problems are not solved. Just a few years ago, Case would have risked his life questioning anyone in authority. When a governmental official does something, he now thinks that there is a press, there is someone to come to me and to ask me that uh, why this happened and when has that this happened and who is responsible for that. The press is a bridge among the people and the government. At a vehicle impound lot, frustrated motorists surround case eager to speak out against the traffic police who they say are asking for bribes to release their cars. IWPR articles are published in three languages on the internet. But knowing that 80% of the population is unable to read, Case takes his story to the local radio station. For the first time in Afghanistan's history, the flow of reliable information is more than a trickle. And as it grows, so do the country's hopes for a stable democracy.